All right, in today's video, we're gonna be looking at the Softstar Switchback boot. It's a minimalist boot with zero heel drop and a real grippy sole. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about what I feel about these shoes and how they compare to the Lems Boulder boot and how you can decide which one is gonna be a better choice for you. I'm gonna talk about the pros and cons that I've noticed with this boot in the short time that I've had them and talk about some of the negative things people have written about this boot online. I'm gonna talk about the things that this excels at and the things that this minimalist boot is not great at. If this video helps you decide on either of these boots, then be sure to use my affiliate links down in the description box to help support this channel and future reviews like this. I received these boots from Softstar free for me to review and share whatever opinions I have about it. They are not paying me for this review and I'm allowed to say that these boots suck if I want to. So first, let's get into the pros of this boot. Number one, these are really flexible at the ankle. You can see that I can just crush easily with my hand this fabric material that they used all around the boot. It never feels like this is impeding my range of motion and my ankle dorsiflexion. Second is the grip on this mega grip sole from Vibram is very, very grippy. Now it is not a super thin sole like other soft star shoes. You are not going to have the adjustment period that you have when you're using their Mach 3 really super, super thin soled shoes or their Dash super, super thin soled shoes. These things are really, really, really unbelievably flexible. The sole on the Mega Grip, obviously not so flexible, but still pretty flexible. You can twist it, turn it, roll it, it's not gonna feel like it's restricting you and it doesn't have any heel rise, right? So this is a perfectly flat shoe sole. The boots feel just like your feet can do whatever they need to do. When I ordered these from Softstar, I asked for the wide size because I have some wide feet and the wide size is actually good and roomy for my big fat feet. Now for comparison, the Lems boulder boot, waterproof boulder boot that I have, they're pretty wide and they're comfortable, but I think the soft star boots are actually just a smidge wider and they give me a little extra room for toe spread. 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 The interior of the soft star switchback is a nice, furry, fuzzy, warm material and it instantly feels like I've wrapped my foot in a blanket when I stick my foot inside. The exterior of the boot is some cut resistant, high tech, water resistant material that's supposed to be super, super durable. I don't know how long it's gonna last. I haven't had them forever, but I'm assuming since they're claiming it's gonna last a long time, it probably will. And from what I've seen from other people scratching up their boots, it seems to hold up pretty well. All right, so this super fabric it's called is supposed to be slash and puncture resistant. So what I'm gonna do is take this old knife that I have and try to cut. So I'm actually trying to press in, to puncture. I'm pressing pretty hard. I'm not sure how I can demonstrate to you how hard I'm pressing, but I think if I pressed a little harder, it would punch through, but I don't wanna to totally ruin the boots. And then, if I drag the knife across here, I can get it, get some traction, but I can get like a tiny little cut on there. But you can see this is a pretty serrated knife. It should do something, but it's actually holding up pretty well. So there you have it, super fabric. Seems to work. It feels like if I just want to really do it, I could get it, but. Cuts, seems pretty resistant. All right, let me, last little test. I want to try this again. I'm just gonna cut across the top. All right, so if you're looking at the boot, I just slashed across here. That little tiny bit, I don't know if you can tell. Uh, that was where I was slashing at it. The sides. You can just like kind of see the knife slashing through there, but you know, that's pretty darn good. If this were leather, you would definitely see that slash mark. It is important to note that this is not leather, so it's not going to feel like leather and it has a particular feeling that you may not like and I'll talk about that later in the video. 
Finally, the biggest pro that I think is worth mentioning is that these boots are made in the United States. They're made in Oregon by American workers who are paid a living wage and who are craftsmen at making shoes by hand. Maybe you don't care, but I really do. And I think it's awesome that they are making these boots in the United States with American labor and doing it in a principled way with employees who are cared for and provided for. So that is a huge thumbs up even if it means that the boots are a little more expensive than some other options. I personally feel better when the company that provides a product or service to me is treating its employees well and is not so, so driven by profit that it will do anything it can to reduce its cost to the bare minimum. All right, so let's talk about the cons of the switchback. First of all, it is not a waterproof boot. So if you're looking for waterproof, no, this is not it. I accidentally spilled some water on the top of this boot once and my sock was almost instantly wet. Now, contrast that to the Lems Boulder boot, which I could spray with a hose directly all over the boot and not have any wetness in my sock. This just doesn't hold up in terms of water resistance. I've read some reviews where people suggested just wearing wool socks or waterproof socks so that if your feet do get wet, they will dry out and they won't feel all icky with cotton socks. That's probably a good idea. I would just say if you're going to wear thicker socks, you may need to size up on this boot because there's not that much extra room. I've only worn these boots with pretty thin socks and those have felt really warm in this boot, but they're not gonna provide any of that breathability once my foot gets wet. The other con that I would bring to your attention is that this material, because it's not leather, will not stretch at all. I read some reviews where people complained that the big toe was really too tight for them and that it was similar to the tightness that you find on the Primal uh, shoes from Softstar. But the Primals I've also worn before. I understand what people are talking about with that because the big toe is like so tight to the top that it's kind of freaky. And they say that if you give it time, it'll stretch out, but it really looks and feels really uncomfortable from my perspective. So I don't wear those shoes. I, I sent them back. These boots don't have that problem. It's not nearly that extreme, but this material definitely will not stretch out. And I have noticed that the big toe does rub. That fabric rubs a little bit on my big toe. I haven't worn these shoes on really long hikes yet, and so I've never experienced any blistering or anything like that, but it is a potential issue that maybe could be addressed if Softstar added a little more volume here or just tested things out. I don't know if more fabric here would help. Sometimes that may just create more bunching and then create more rubbing, which might be a problem, but it's something to think about, something to test when you first try on these boots. I'm sure different foot shapes and sizes and toe shapes and sizes will affect that. So just pay attention to that when you get your pair of the switchbacks. For me, I've worried about that hot spot, but so far it really hasn't caused any problems, even when I'm walking a couple miles. So I think it's gonna be fine, and I hope it stays totally fine for me. And the final small little thing you should be aware of is that these boots are way too warm to use when it's warm out. So these are gonna be more cold weather boots. Don't expect these to be your awesome hiking boots for the summer because that liner is definitely warm and your feet will turn into a sweaty hot mess. So let's talk about final recommendations for minimalist boots with zero drop soles. Now, if you are looking for waterproof minimalist boots, the switchback is not it. It is not the solution. It is going to have you with a wet soaking foot. If you want waterproof, then the boulder boot, the waterproof boulder boot from Lems is definitely the way you want to go. If you want a leather boot with more of a leather feel, then you're going to want to get the Lems boulder boot in the waterproof version so that your feet don't get soaking wet. However, if you are looking for shoes with maximum grip so you don't slip out when you step on rocks like you do with the boulder boot, then I would strongly suggest looking at the switchback from Softstar. These minimalist boots have maximum grip. I've tested it. You can dig up rocks with your foot if you want. If you want to feel like your foot is wrapped in a nice, warm, flexible blanket, then I would also suggest looking at the soft star boots. In terms of overall flexibility and comfort, I really prefer the soft stars to the lambs because they don't have that stiff ankle feeling. 
Even when I try tying the laces lower or looser in the limbs, I always feel like the fit is too sloppy and the ankles are still too stiff. But on the soft stars, even if I cinch it pretty tight, I don't feel like there's any issue with my ankle mobility and I really like that. It helps me move, it helps me navigate, it helps me maneuver, and that's a huge plus, especially when I have the grip to do whatever I want. For a lot of people, price may be the determining factor, and if you're just looking for the cheapest boot that's comfortable and minimalist, then the Lems Bowler boot will definitely win because it is significantly cheaper than the Switchback from Softstar. That said, the Switchbacks are a strong, strong contender because they are very comfortable, very flexible. The sole is grippy and flexible, more so than the Boulder boot, and they look pretty cool. They fit well, and they're a little bit wider in the toe box if you get them in the wide size than the Lem's Boulder Boot. So now I wanna ask you, which of these boots do you think is gonna be a better fit for you? Drop me a comment down below. That's gonna do it for this video. I'm gonna go out and have some adventures, and I hope you do too with whatever boots you choose. If you're gonna buy either of these minimalist boots, please use my affiliate links down below. Don't forget to subscribe, share this video with some other minimalist boot looking crazy person. And as always, I hope you remember that pain sucks. Life shouldn't.